Welcome to Easy Elim Learning Simplified. My name is Ruth, and today we are going to be looking at apparatus, the topic of introduction to chemistry. Previously, we were looking at the introduction bits of this topic, and we were looking at the role of chemistry in the society. We were also able to look at the laboratory apparatus uh, rules, sorry, uh, that we apply in the lab. So you notice some of the rules that we are going we discussed then we are going also to look at those apparatus specifically. So you can go back and check out those lessons that we have already done. So for today we are going to focus on apparatus and specific apparatus. We are going to look at, at the apparatus used for measuring volume, apparatus used for measuring temperature, apparatus used for measuring mass, and apparatus used for measuring time. And then we will tackle a few questions in regards to what we are going to discuss today. So let's just start. First of all, um, the, the laboratory is usually a building. It's, it's a special room. It can be a room or a building uh, that is used to store chemicals and apparatus. So whenever we are studying chemistry, we go to the lab to do those experiments because we have chemicals and apparatus stored in the laboratory so but you notice that most apparatus in the lab are usually made up of either glass or plastic and mostly glass there's a reason why so there's a reason why this is so so they're usually made of transparent glass or plastic because first of all they allow one to see through while observing reactions. You're able to see the reactions that are occurring without necessarily looking from the top. You can check from the sides and you see exactly what you want to see. And it also helps, it's the same thing that it helps to determine the level of liquids because they are transparent, you can see through. And for glass and plastic, most of them do not react with most of the reagents used in the lab. Not all of them, but most of them. So that we can easily use them because they are unreactive with most of the uh, reagents in the lab. And then, so we are going to start with the apparatus used for measuring volume. Um, and the apparatus used for measuring volume, we are going to divide them into two. We are going to have apparatus used for measuring uh, approximate volume. And we usually use these three apparatus for approximate volume. So the first apparatus is a beaker. It is usually graduated and also the conical flask and measuring cylinder. We have uh, measuring cylinders and beakers which are plastic or glass. And these ones are used to measure the volume, but approximate volumes. We do not need like accurate volumes in com when it comes to these um, these apparatus. We also have other apparatus that are used for measuring volume, but for measuring accurate volume. So the ones that are used for measuring accurate volumes are these four. We use the volumetric flask, uh, the syringe, the pipette, and the burette. And I want you to notice the volumetric flask because you are going to also have a flask called round bottom flask and flat bottom flask. And there's a tendency for students to confuse these two, these three uh, flasks. This one is very specific. You can see it has a lid and then it is usually indicated the volume that it measures and then it's flat at the bottom. It has a very long neck. So it can come in different sizes. We have the 250 ml, we have the 500, we have the liter and two liters. It can, it can go as big as that. It is used to measure exact. So where the line is, is where it shows the final or the exactness of the volume that you're trying to measure. For the syringe, we are going to discuss the syringe when we are uh, measuring air, uh, the active part of air, and you're looking at uh, oxygen uh, taking part in burning of metals. And we're going to use it a lot because it helps to measure accurate volumes. For the pipette and the burette, we are going to use it in titrations. Uh, very often in form three. So we're also going to look at that and you can see the difference between the two. This is how the burette looks like. It has a tap and it is graduated. And for the pipette, it is it comes in different sizes as well. And also note the uh, spellings of the same. The next, uh, we are going to look at measurement of temperature. 
Uh, temperature also is measured in the laboratory. We usually use thermometers. We have different types of thermometers that are in the lab. We have the maximum and minimum thermometer, which are used a lot by physics students. We have the clinical thermometer that is used in the uh, in the hospitals. After, then we have the general uh, purpose uh, thermometers, which are usually used in the lab. And we also went later on to go into details on how to measure and how to read those values uh, in the thermometer and how to transfer them later on in details. Next, we are going to look at the measurement of mass. We also measure mass in the laboratory, uh, but we usually use different weighing balance and specifically we use electronic balances in the lab because the amount of uh, solids that we measure in the lab are not that huge. It's not in comparison to the top pan uh, balances or weighing balances like the bean balance that is used in, in, like, in stores and also this that is used in industries. Uh, but in the laboratory, we use the smaller ones because we have less amount of um, uh, measurements to do, and it's not that uh, a lot in comparison to industries. Also, we are going to go into details on how to measure mass using the electronic balance, because you would be required to measure your own masses, especially when you're working on uh, titration or some of the qualitative analysis in form three so you're going to go into details with that but these are some of the apparatus especially the electronic balance that is used for measuring mass in the laboratory uh, next you're going to look at apparatus for measuring time we also measure time in the lab not only when the reactions are occurring which is very often uh, we also want to see how much time it takes for some other reactions also to react. So we use them a lot, especially in the topic of rates uh, of reactions in form three. We're also going to use it in form four a lot. We're also going to look at in kinetic theory, we're also going to look at how when we are heating of solids and the changes of matter that it undergoes, we use the watches. But we use specific uh, watches, which we call the stopwatch, uh, the ones that are in black, there are some places where you might require to use your watch and then or the clocks in the walls or the stopwatches. So, but the most common one that we use in the lab is a stopwatch and it comes in this manner. You're also going to learn on how to read the uh, stopwatch accurately and to use it accurately in the laboratory and to get the correct uh, times and also conversion how you convert minutes into seconds and also into hours and, and how are you supposed to note that down in your tables or when you are not noting down the data. So we have looked at uh, measurement of volume, we have looked at measurement of mass, we have looked at measurement of temperature and measuring time, which is our last. So later on, we are going to discuss more apparatus but before we do that, let's look at a few questions in regards to what we have just discussed. So first of all, the first question is give reasons why most laboratory apparatus are made of glass. We said they are made of glass because they are transparent. This, it being transparent allows a person, for a person to see through and to see the reactions that are occurring. So you're able to see the reaction. The reactions occurring uh, in, the, in, the, in the beakers or test tube or whatever operator that you are using. And then um, the other reason why most operators are made of glass is because glass do not react with most reagents in the lab. So they don't react with most reagent in the laboratory. And the next question is the apparatus used to measure accurate. So you are going to see such kind of questions specifying either accurate or approximate measurement of volume. And we said the ones that are used for measuring accurate volumes are we have the burette, we have the pipette, we have the syringe, and we have the volumetric flask. The volumetric flask. 
So either of these are used to measure accurate uh, specific volumes uh, of liquids. And in the next lesson, we're also going to look at more apparatus. So watch out for the next lesson. Uh, see you.